again, thank you for uh, your time and commitment to this time of prayer as we continue to seek racial healing and reconciliation. Um, and and I, again, repeat, if you can mute your phone line uh, so that we don't get uh, background noise, if you could please mute your phone lines, that would be greatly appreciated. As we, uh, with that, uh, let us let us go to God in prayer as we prepare today. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to come to you, knowing that uh, you are the source of our supply and also the answer to uh, life's ailing questions and challenges. And this one matter that has haunted us since our very existence, the issue of racism, God, we are calling on you uh, to speak, minister to our hearts, uh, liberate our minds, and set us free from our from our baggage, Father, so that we can claim the bright future and the victory for all of humanity in you and through we through you. We know it's possible. In your name, we pray. Amen. My friends, on behalf of uh, the Reverend Dr. Andy Stoker and Reverend Kathy Sweeney and myself, Richie Butler, we thank you for joining us today. Um, I want us just to take a moment, and I want to offer some reflections, literally uh, what happened to me on yesterday. So I had the opportunity to provide uh, some, lead a conversation with a as a part of a summer program for that the uh, Dallas Police Department is hosting. <clears throat> and um, the whole conversation centered around uh, these students becoming community leaders and what does that mean. And so as I did my preparation, I thought about, well, what do, what do community leaders do? Um, community leaders are called to, they identify the problem. And then they organize a solution or a fix to the problem. And then uh, the third thing is that we talked about taking action. So identify the problem, organize a fix to the problem, and then take take action. And so I asked the students, let's identify some of the problems uh, that that our community, your community, faces. And so they, you know, read off and outlined a a plethora of, of challenges and issues from, you know, crime, you know, murder, uh, drugs, poverty, sex trafficking, discrimination, uh, edu- educational inequities, uh, some broader issues around transportation, you know, infrastructure, housing, uh, um, you know, just a, a plethora of, of problems. And and then I um, met with a, with someone who is, is currently going through leadership Dallas, and that is uh, sponsored by the the Regional Chamber of Commerce here in North Texas, and they provide a leadership program for for leaders in our in our city, um, high level executives. And exposing them, giving it, giving them an in-depth look at Dallas, the region, and the issues that face the community. And so, this person, you know, acknowledged that they covered issues, the matters of education, transportation, poverty, homelessness, affordable housing, access to capital. Um, you know, the dearth of concerns for our community. And one of the things that, that he point this person pointed out, and what I realized. Uh, after I met with the students and the issues that they laid out before before us as well, is that both experiences, both uh, conversations around the problems that our community face, revealed uh, that they have their roots in racial inequalities, racial inequities. When you think about poverty. People of color are disproportionately affected. When you think about the 
the disparity and issues around education, people of color are disproportionately affected when you think about crime, the people of color are disproportionately affected when you think about housing, access to capital, and, and, and the racial inequities and inequalities are glaring. And what, what, what the person who's part of Leadership Dallas said, which I thought was striking, he said, we skirt, we, we, we talk about the issue, but don't deal with or even want to engage in the underlying um, connector, which is race and race, the, the issue of racial inequity. And, and I believe that as we think about this as a community, whether it's dealing with talking to youth uh, or we are uh, at a higher level, uh, leaders within our, within our city through a Leadership Dallas program, I think, I know, and that's why our time of prayer is so critical when we, talk, when we pray for racial healing and reconciliation, we're really calling for uh, the, the uh, removal of racial inequities and inequality. Um, and so I have a question for us today. Because if education, transportation issues, poverty, homelessness, affordable housing, you know, disproportionate uh, prison incarceration rates, um, murders, all those things, if, if, there, if, if race affects, disproportionately affects those who are minority and of color, then I have a question for us. What are we going to do? <laughs> and... What are we going to do? And, and, and when I think about it, it is quite overwhelming what's before us. But that is why we are, that's why I believe we are called to pray. And as an outline for those students, identifying the problem, we know the, the problem. There is a, we are, it's rooted in racism. We know that. Um, and we got to go to the root. And the root is the heart of humanity. And, and I also know that we cannot legislate this. Um, we we can educate, but education gets us so far. If it if it's the, the heart of humanity, and I believe that is why the role of the faith community and the church is so critical and vital to us overcoming these challenges, because only a connection and relationship with God can begin to root out and get get to the heart of the matter or get to begin to speak to our hearts and transform and change us. And so with that, we know the problem, racial inequity, racism, issue of race. And so I just want to offer up a couple of solutions. As I did, as the students and I talked about some of the, the community challenges in organizing a fix or solution. So I just want to offer up a couple solutions for us as we uh, move forward through the rest of our day. The first one is for us to keep praying, which means that we know this is above our pay grade. We recognize that we need God. We need a source of power that is far greater and far more impactful that can drive the kind of heart change that is needed in our societal society. So we must keep praying. The second thing I w we are challenged to do is, is to a call to repentance, a call to repentance, that we all need to repent um, for our role in perpetuating in our role and sustaining in our role and elevating in our role and ignoring and denying that the issue even exists, a call to repentance. And then I believe we must be intentional about going forward. And what I mean by that, intentional about going forward. See, it's one thing to be called to repentance and to pray. It's another thing to be intentional about how you, how you live race, how you walk in exercise in communities uh, that are different in your own community. Uh, the, you know, we talk, it's interesting. We talk about 
the most segregated hour of the week is Sunday. But people are not intentional about changing it because most of us are comfortable. And so we must be intentional about what we do going forward. And then the last thing I want to encourage us to do is that we can't go back to our old ways. If we are committed and intentional, we can't go back to the way we've done things. And, and I want to offer this example. Um, there's a, a lady who is passionate about um, matters of race, and, and she happens to live, I believe she lives in the Park Cities. Um, she's an Anglo woman. And she came up to me, and she is trying to, you know, bring about some social change uh, in her own community in, in, in this area of, of race relations. And she said what really did it for her is that her daughter went away to college and came back and said, I cannot live this way anymore, Mom. And in, in other words, the daughter made it, made, had made some intentional changes and was not willing to go back to the old ways. It's so easy for us to go back to our old ways. Uh, I believe many of us will choose a known hell as opposed to an unknown heaven because it's familiar and it's it's easy to go back to our old ways. And so I want to challenge us on this day to keep praying that we are called we issue a call to repentance and that we, we must be intentional on what going forward looks like, and then we cannot go back to our old ways as we seek to root out this sin, this evil in our society called racism. It is a matter of the heart. So we want to get to the heart of humanity as we seek God's face, God's power, God's authority, and God's love to lead us to a better place. Let us pray. We thank you right now, Lord, for this moment. We thank you for practical, applicable ways in which we can root out, ways in which we can be part of the solution and no longer part of the problem. So I pray that we keep praying because we need you. I pray that we will all call, our set, call seek a call to repentance from our own attitudes, our own ways of supporting and reinforcing institution, institutional racism, and that we will be intentional and that we seek to not go back to our old ways. We thank you right now for the victory that we know we have in you and through you. And so we seek right now to live this thing of faith, to live this relationship with you and to live in harmony and in community as reconcilers one to another. We ask it all in your name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you, my friends, for joining us on this day. And remember, this time next week, uh, 9 a.m. Central Time, we reconvene and we reassemble uh, to stand at the doorpost, calling on God to help heal us and rid us and deliver us of deliver us from this dreaded sin call and this dreaded sin call uh, racism and this cancer that is uh, racism that is a cancer on our society. So we look forward to you joining us next week. Go in peace and be blessed. Thank you.